Psalm 26, just a little thought this morning. And um, I've been on my mind all week to give you this. I guess since it's Valentine week, Sweetheart week, so that started that old Valentine, guy's name was Valentine actually, was in prison and he, for his faith and he thought of his loved ones back home and he picked these little heart-shaped leaves off of these bushes that growed out there and would write notes on them and send them to his, to his sweetheart and that's how we've got Valentine, that's what they say. But anyway, Psalm 26 this morning, look at verse 1 and 2. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. That's what I'm going to talk about this morning, your heart. He said, examine me, Lord, and try my heart. I want to preach this morning on a heart exam. Your, your heart, or the heart, is mentioned 800 times, more or less, in the Bible. Compared to brain, none. Compared to mind, about 8 to 1. So in the Bible, as he mentioned in Sunday school, definitely your heart is the most important thing in your Christian life, where your heart is. Well, I'm going to give us a heart exam from the Bible. Okay? You ready? I'm going to stretch out on the table, hook up stuff to you, look down your throat, in your ears and everything, and we're going to look at your heart. Now, the world, they kind of laugh at us Christians sometimes because we talk about Jesus coming in your heart and stuff. They say, you Christians are silly. Your heart is nothing but an organ inside your body uh, that pumps blood. Now, that's it. The heart is an organ inside your body, and it does work hard. 75 times a minute average, two and a half billion times if you make it to 70 years old. 3,000 gallons of blood a day. Your heart pumps 650,000 per year. Your heart does enough work in one hour to lift a 150 pound man, me, three stories high in work just that little organ. But I'm convinced that when, when we get to heaven and we find out everything that people don't know now, that the heart is connected with the real you. I'm talking about the organ. The heart, you hear it said, is the seat of your emotions. Uh, uh, and you hear it said different things like that. It's, it's like uh, the different people ask, them, what's the difference between your heart and your mind? There's a lot of difference. Uh, I'd sit in school and I'd watch them boys out there playing ball. And I'd watch them like this right there, and they'd say, Danny. I'd go, Danny, yes, ma'am. What's three plus three? Six. That's my mind. That's my heart. See, see the difference there? Uh, your mind can figure up stuff, and your heart is you, and your desires, and who you really, really are. That's why when, uh, when a guy has a, has a girlfriend, he said, do you love me with what? He don't say, you love me with all your mind. No. Uh, uh, she may not have one. And uh, 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 Do you love me with all your heart? With all your heart. That's why the Lord said the most important commandment is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Then mind, soul, body, strength, so forth, and so on. Because as he said, he was right on target. If your heart's right, everything else falls in place. God would rather have your heart than your money. Because if he gets your heart, he's got your money. God would rather have your heart than your talent. Because if he's got your heart, he's got your talent. God would rather have your heart than your time. Because if he's got your heart, he's got your time. And let's talk about that a little bit today. Now, I, I, I looked in the Bible, Lord in mercy, there's like uh, 15 different hearts in the Bible. And I'm not going to give all 15 of them, but I'm going to try to summarize them in these that I'm going to name off. So I'm really not going to preach a whole sermon on them. I'm just going to name these all. Number one, there's a merry heart. Do you know in the Bible there's a merry heart? Proverbs 17, 22. The Bible said a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So that means there is a direct, direct connection between being happy and being merry and your health. Do you know that? 
You know, you sit around all the time and feel sorry for yourself and you're going to get worse. You know, you sit around and think, oh, this is bad and that's bad and everything's bad and poor me and I'm pitiful and everything. That's bad for your health, man. Laughter doeth good like a medicine, like a medicine. Did you know a happy Christian is a strong Christian? Finish this verse. The joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Now, you want to be a strong Christian? Be a happy Christian. Years ago, there was in this country, uh, uh, the other country, a fellow by the name of Billy Bray. And Billy Bray they, uh, was an old wicked man. He got saved. And when he got it, brother, he got a dose. I ain't kidding you. And uh, Billy Bray is the one who uh, coined that phrase that you hear so much, I was born in the fire and can't stand the smoke. And he says something like he went around shouting all the time. Shouted all the time. I'm telling you, that old boy, he let her rip. And he said he'd go down the road saying, Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. They said one time these boys got behind a, 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 a bridge one time. And they said, Billy Bray. And he stopped and said, Who is that? And he said, I'm the devil. And Billy Bray went, Woo, hallelujah. And he said, What are you shouting about? He said, I didn't know you was that far away from me. Uh, uh, he thought he was a lot closer. He said he shouted on everything, didn't he? He'd shout at the drop of a hat and drop the hat and get the shout. And uh, I'm, I'm a believer in that. I, I don't believe in fake and putting nothing on, nothing like that. But listen, buddy, when you start thinking about being saved and your name's in God's book and there's a burning hell down there and we're not going to burn, listen, brother, it'll bubble up in your soul once in a while. And it ought to. It ought to. And, brother, the Bible said a merry heart, a merry heart doeth good. Old Billy Bray said, he has made me glad and no one can make me sad. He has made me shout and nobody can make me doubt. There's always some good, godly, dedicated, separated, backslid hypocrite wanting to pour cold water on your shout and tell you you can't enjoy the Lord. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. If you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and your name's up there in God's book, you're going to heaven when you die. Well, you just let her rip once in a while. Sometimes you ought to just jump up and go, Whoa! You say, well, ain't you afraid? You think, Don't talk to me about fanatics. It's glory bowl day. You don't want to get me in a bad mood talking about fanatics. Amen. Lord, I've seen them guys get on there and there's a, a ball, Duke ball game and all these boys had their shirts off and one of them had a big old blue D, a big giant blue, a D on his belly and the other one had a U and the other one had a K and the other one had an E and they're screaming like, they, like, like people lost their minds. They're really like his own something. And he's, what happened to what? What happened to what? What happened to what? I said, okay, uh, calm down, kids. Uh, it's just a game. It's just a game. Don't talk to me about being fanatical. When I, my name is in God's heaven, and I've got a place reserved, a mansion in glory that fadeth not away, where thieves can't break through and steal, and moth can't corrupt, and I live forever in a perfect environment with a Savior, and have perfect peace and happiness forever. That's something to shout about right there. Merry heart doeth good like a minute, but I'm going to hurry. In the Bible, there is a foolish heart. Do you know in the Bible there's a foolish heart? Romans 1.21 said their foolish heart was darkened. There's a lot of people got a foolish heart, just foolish. These are people that go out and get drunk on Saturday night and party and ain't never figured it out yet that it's never going to work like that. Um, uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's your heart that gets you in trouble like that. Uh, like that, this girl came in one time and uh, she said, uh, Daddy, uh, I, I want to marry this guy really, really bad, but Daddy, he don't believe in the devil. And he said, go ahead and marry him. You'll show him he is one. And, and that's, where a lot of people, that's where a lot of people are. Do you know that? I mean, they just don't know. They don't get it. They don't get it. And they go out here over and get in trouble and get in trouble. And then they get locked up and then get in a fight and then get locked up again and then get caught for breaking and entering. And then, I mean, just a foolish heart, just a foolish heart. A perfect example of that is Herodias' daughter there who came in and danced there and got John the Baptist's head cut off, sneaking out of the house at night, uh, getting out of work, Meeting your boyfriend when you're not supposed to be and seeing I don't know where you're not supposed to be, doing what you're not supposed to do, uh, going out behind.
behind the school and or maybe uh, smoking something or maybe taking pills or getting high or something like that. The Bible calls that a foolish heart. It's a foolish heart because it's a, it's a one-way trip, brother. You, you ain't going nowhere. Uh, drinking alcohol is a foolish heart. Smoking pot is a foolish heart. Uh, deliberately just saying, uh, there's no consequences. That's a foolish heart. Number three, in the Bible, there's a deceitful heart. In the Bible, in, um, in, in the Word of God, Jeremiah 17, 9, as a matter of fact, all of us have that. The Bible said our heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. I've heard hundreds of people say it since I've been saved. Used, all them little country churches up in the mountains, somebody will stand up and they'll say, Preacher, if I know my heart, and the truth is, you don't. You don't know your own heart. Who can know it? Only the Lord knows. Your, your own heart will play tricks on you. Some of the dumbest advice anybody ever give you is this. Just follow your heart. You couldn't hear, uh, you couldn't hear a dumber thing in your life. You, you better follow the Lord's what you better do. About it. You better follow that book. Right there. Your heart will get you in trouble. My heart, has your heart ever got you in trouble? Yes, it has. Mine has too. And your heart is deceitful. It'll finagle around. It'll connive. It'll manipulate. That old heart, deceitful brother. You watch it. You watch a thing wiggle. I, old Frank over there, bless his heart, two years old, and he's done getting a deceitful heart. Lordy mercy. Where's he? Yeah, Kelly. Uh, oh, he's in the nursery. Uh, he, he ain't right this morning. Uh, but anyway, listen, uh, I, he's done getting a deceitful heart. Uh, I didn't give him something he wanted the other day, and he went, Ugh. where'd that come from? That's that. You're born with that. You got it from your mom and daddy, and they got it from their mom and daddy, and they got it from their mom and daddy. And they got it. You say, where'd my kid get that? From you. <laughs> Amen. That's a deceitful heart. It plots and plots scams. And, and uh, well, what am I going to tell my husband? And how are we going to pull this off? You know, junk like that. Politicians are a perfect example of a deceitful heart. Uh, but the problem with a deceitful heart is when you're deceiving somebody, the devil's deceiving you at the same time. Them rock singers that get on there, they say, we're on the highway, you know, and we're going to party in hell. Well, guess what, dude? Uh, the joke's on you. Because while you're deceiving them kids, when you wind up in hell, the devil will laugh at you, and you have been deceived and being deceived at the same time. But then let me say, uh, uh, fourthly this morning, there's a stony heart. I hope you don't have a stony heart. What's a stony heart? Ezekiel 11, verse 19 their heart was stone. Nothing gets to them. Hard. One of the things I've noticed uh, in the last 20 years, you know, uh, when I first got saved, we'd go to jail and preach and go into prison and preach. And you see some hard guys in there. You see some people's hard. Uh, you see some people committed every crime in the book. And man, they're hard. They're hard. You can't hardly, uh, no, no tears, no emotion, no kind of no response at all. Do you know what? We're living in a generation where you see that in 13, 14 year old girls and 15 year old boys. Hard as a rock, brother. I mean, you can talk about Jesus dying on the cross. Their face is like that piece of wood right there. It's a, I know, I know th this generation grew up and said, well, we don't, we don't, uh, 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 real men don't cry. No, real men don't cry. That, that's not true. That's not true. Listen, people, uh, you, you, you need to have a soft heart. If you get to where you can't cry, you're in trouble. Don't ever get to the place where you, you say, I'm just never going to let myself, I've, I've been hurt and I'm just not going to let myself get, uh, listen, don't, don't get a hard heart. Don't get a stony heart. That's a dangerous shape to get in. As you get older, your heart can get harder and harder. That's why most people get saved when they're young. You'd think that all old people would get saved, wouldn't you? But they don't. One out of 700,000 past 60, I think, and then like one out of a million or something past 70. It's rare. You know why? The heart gets harder. Every time you say no to God, Every time you sit here on Sunday morning and say, I don't care what he says, I don't care what the Bible says, I'm going to do what I want to do. Every time you do that, that heart gets a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, and a little harder until finally it's nothing but stone, brother. Nothing but stone. 
Pharaoh in the Bible is the biblical example of a stony heart. Let me say number five. In the Bible, there's an obstinate heart. An obstinate heart. Well, that means stubborn, rebellious. You just absolutely don't want to do what you're supposed to. Just will not do what you're told. Just rebellious. Uh, uh, another word for that in another verse, scripture is rebellious heart. The rebellious heart. A s- obstinate heart. Just don't care what this is. You know, a little boy one time, uh, his mama said, now you're going to sit down while we do this. And he stand up and he said, sit down. He stand up and said, sit down. And he stand up. And finally she said, boy, you're going to sit down. And she sat him down and he sat there like this and he said, I'm sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. You know what that is? That's that kid's heart. Man, churches are full of people this morning. Oh, you're serving the Lord on the outside, but you're standing up on the inside, fussing and kicking and screaming because you have to go to church, because you can't do this, because you can't go there. This is wrong. That's wrong. Wah, wah, wah. Cry like a little baby, because you can't do every ungodly, rotten, low-down thing out there in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me? They will not submit. Ignore the advice of the pastor. Ignore the advice of the parents. Won't listen to the police. Won't listen. You know what's going to happen to somebody like that? Jail. Go on in jail. And hell, eventually, if nobody can't tell you nothing, you're going to, you know, they say the, the most lonely place in the world is a human heart where there's no love. Contrast that to the old man that said this. So the guy kept telling him, he said, oh, I love the Lord, I got joy in my heart, I got joy in my heart, I got joy in my heart. And an educated fellow come up and said, listen, man, you, you quit that crazy talk. Your heart ain't nothing but an organ inside your body. He said, it may just be an organ, but every time it hears the name of Jesus, it plays amazing grace. And I'm telling you this morning, folks, get your heart right. Number six, there's a proud heart. Bible said in Proverbs 16, 5, a proud heart, a proud look, a proud heart. You, 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 you begin to think you're better than other people. You begin to look down on other people because they are not you or don't have what you have or what you think you have or what you think you are. You've heard me say it here over and over and over. Listen, there ain't nobody in here no better than nobody else. We're all sinners that ought to be in hell this morning. No, we're, we're all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody has a right to look down on anybody else. Nobody has a right to say, I'm better than you are. You know the sin that disgusted the Lord more than any other sin while he was here on earth? Them Pharisees and their self-righteous uh, attitude and their pride and their pomp and their big shot attitude. I, I, we're better than you are. There ain't nobody no better than anybody else. There's nobody in here, no better that can look down on anybody else. Don't have a proud heart. You better off stay low. They said, you get them boys in the military, they give them three orders. Get down, stay down, don't get up. When you're out there and them bullets flying like Brother Wayne knows in Vietnam, you got three commands. Get down, stay down, don't get up. And buddy, if you ever got some good advice for your Christian life, that's it. Get down, stay down, and don't get up. About the time you get up, the Lord will let something knock you right off of your high horse. Don't, I've heard people say, well, I'd never do that. You better watch talking like that. I've heard people say, I'd never let one of my kids. You better watch talking like that. I've heard people say, I can't believe that so and it'll come back and get you one of these days if you ain't real careful. Sure will. You better be careful how you judge other people. What judgment you meet, it'll be measured to you one of these days. We've all had to eat words. Amen? We've all had to go apologize to somebody because of stuff we said or did or thought. That's a proud heart. America is in trouble this morning. Proverbs 16, 5 said, Everyone that is proud in heart is abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 21, 4 said, a high look, a proud heart. 
and a plowing of the wicked is sin. Movie stars are great examples of that. Uh, politicians, athletes, uh, uh, big shots as we know. Uh, a big shot is a little shot that ought to be shot. Uh, uh, there's no such thing as a person who's above somebody because they have nicer clothes or house or more money or, or anything like that. That's, that's a proud, proud heart. Let me say something to you about our country, and I'm not preaching about this this morning. They say our economy's doing great. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad it is, if it, if it is. They say, good, great days are here. I hope they are. But I'm going to tell you something, buddy. God's not blinking an eye at what America's doing this morning. This country's going down, y'all. This country's going down. The wicked shall be turned in hell and all the nations that forget God. I'm, I'm happy for all the positive stuff. Great, hallelujah. But if we think, boy, we're going to make jobs and we're going to make, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, I tell you what God will do. He'll knock you down. And, and, and the only reason probably he's had mercy on this country as long as he had is for men like this right here and churches. America still supports more missionaries, puts out more gospel all over the world. And brother, thank God, it, 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 when, when we're gone, buddy, it's bad. We've done this the green tree. What are they going to do when it gets dry? Proud heart. Then not only that, number seven, there's a wicked heart. There's a wicked heart. That's awful. That proud heart there is Belshazzar. That wicked heart is Judas. Out of thine own heart. Bible said in Judas in John chapter 13, betrayed the Lord. Out of the wicked heart proceed wicked thoughts and wicked imagination. So J. Frank Norris went to church one time and he got up and it was a big fancy church, big fancy downtown Baptist church and they got up and you know, you can just tell he was in the wrong place. And the pastor called, a, called on a deacon over here to pray, brother so-and-so. And he prayed one of them early morning Southern Baptist perfect prayers like, Oh, God of Jehoshaphat, the great God of Abraham, we thank thee for this beautiful Sabbath day. You know, like that. And he got through praying. And old Nars stood up and he said, Buddy, your heart's cold as a block of ice. I didn't have no revival there. No, but it probably felt good to say that. He, he told somebody later, he said, I always did feel better after I said that. <laughs> but they wouldn't have had no revival, no way. You can't have revival with that kind of attitude. Wicked. And, um, I think it's Bob Jones Sr. said one time they'd visit all these men in prison. And he talked to men that had been in prison for years and years and years and years and years. And he said this. He said, Behind every ruined life is a long process of wicked thinking. Teenagers, are you listening? Behind every ruined life, there's a long process of wicked thinking. It does matter what you sit around and think about. Because whatever you think about, eventually, sooner or later, you're going to wind up doing it. You listen? That's why it's important not to have stuff on your phone that you shouldn't be looking at. Amen? Come on now. Say amen. Listen, people. It ain't right to look at dirty stuff on your phone. It's not right to look at filthy pictures and pornography and wicked. Lord, have mercy when we was coming up. I mean, uh, uh, an R-rated movie was awful. Now, look at what kids see now. You better learn to keep your thinking clean. You get a wicked heart, you're going to be a wicked person before it's over with. Out of the abundance of the what? Heart. The mouth speaketh. The wicked heart. Matthew or Mark 7, 21. There are 13, 13 evils in the human heart. And it said, out of the heart proceedeth evil things. Let me say this. Change gears just a little bit. Number eight. There is in the Bible a broken heart. A broken heart. Now, old Haman was a picture of that wicked heart in Ezra, Esther. You know the picture of a broken heart? David. David had his heart broke more than once. And if you've ever had your heart broke, if I stress in here say, how many have ever had your heart broke? There would be people in here to raise your hand just like that, and there would be some say, I don't know if I have or not. You ain't. If you ever had your heart broke, you don't know it. 
I've had my heart broke a few times. And there ain't no kind of misery and pain in this world than to get your heart broke. That's why I tell people all the time, when you get your heart broke, when you come in one day and there's a note there saying, I don't love you no more, I don't want to live with you no more, and it breaks your heart. You, there's no, you know what David did? Everybody who gets their heart broke turns to something. It hurts so bad you can't do it by yourself, so you turn to something. And you will turn to God, drugs, or another person. Everybody. I mean, I've seen it a thousand times. People, I've been, I've been counseling people for 40 years doing this stuff. Everybody who gets their heart broke turn to God, drugs, or another person. And by far, you're better off to turn to God. Because if you turn to either one of them other two, you're just, that's a temporary band-aid, and it won't go away, and you wind up going to get yourself in another mess that's going to hurt just as bad. Well, you broke my heart, so I'm going to go do this. Yeah, you're going to get your heart broke again in that. You better turn to God. That's what David said in Psalm 51 when he, when he committed that sin, had a man killed, stole his wife, had a terrible, made a big mess. He said, God, oh God, my heart, God, my heart, my heart. That's why the Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. He wanted his heart right. Broken and contrite heart, oh God, will not despise. A spouse can break it. A child, a kid can break it. A kid can break your heart. That's why they say when they're little, they step on your feet. When they're old, what do they do? Step on your heart. A child can break your heart. Many are scared today. You know the old song they used to sing when I was a kid. I'll never fall in love again. You know, like I, you know, because they're afraid I don't want to get hurt again. That ain't the right attitude. I've heard people say, "I've got hurt in church, so I made up my mind I wasn't ever going to join another church. I'll just come and sit in the back, not speak to nobody." Well, you need to get in the altar and get your heart right. Get your heart right with God and get back in there. It ain't gonna kill you. You say, "I don't want to get hurt again." Well, Get used to it, buddy. <laughs> All I can tell you, you got to grow up sometime. And listen, a broken heart hurts you. A broken heart will hurt you. And then number nine is a humble heart. A humble heart. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. You know my people call my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face. I'll turn my way. Listen, it's not the body's posture, but the heart's attitude that gets God's attention. God resisteth the proud. You can be proud on your knees. God crowns with, with uh, glory, but it won't fit a swollen head. I know, people that, I know people that's proud that they're not proud. You know, you ever say, I'm the most humble one here. <laughs> You're full of the devil is what you are. You're proud of how humble you are. The, 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 listen, that's not humility. That's not humility. God resisteth the proud. Who's the Bible example of that? The publican. Pharisee and publican. Both went to church one Sunday morning. Both heard the same sermon. Both heard the same choir. Both heard the same testimony. Pharisee sat over here and said, Well, you really told him today, preacher. I'm glad that I'm not as other men like these peasants. I pay my tithes, I do this, and the Lord didn't even look at him. So you nauseate me, man. I don't even want to look your direction. And the other guy over here hit himself in the chest and wouldn't even look up and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the Bible said, that man went down there. You, you want me to tell you all how to get help from the Lord this morning? You get up here or right there where you sit or anything, and you bow your head and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I ain't nothing. I don't deserve nothing. I ain't blaming my sins on somebody else. I ain't trying to say it's my daddy's fault or mom the way I was raised. or the, I ain't blaming it on nobody. God, be merciful to me, a sorry, good-for-nothing sinner. That's the way you get help from the Lord. I, I'm going to say this, and I'm done. There's a willing heart. That's a Philippian jailer in Acts 16. You know what a willing heart is? Lord, I'm not much. I don't have a whole lot. 
I've messed up a lot, but Lord, my heart is willing. I saw the Lord years ago. I said, Lord, I'm not much. I'm just a little country preacher out here in the middle of nowhere. The world will never care if I lived or died. The world wouldn't care if I left here today. But Lord, what I've got is yours. And I'm giving it to you this morning. That's what the Lord wants. He don't want you to try to buy him off. He wants you to be willing. The door to your heart can only be opened from the inside. Nobody can't force their way in. Jesus, he said, I stand at the door and knock. He said years ago, his family sat down to eat, and it was Valentine. And uh, they sat down to eat supper, and, and a little girl about five years old sitting there, and she was sniffing and wiping tears. And, and they, Mama said, honey, what's wrong? They kept him and Daddy looked at him and said, "Honey, what is wrong?" She went. She just looked at her daddy and started crying. He said, "Honey, what's wrong?" She said, "Well, Daddy, I made you a Valentine. I wanted to give it to you and messed it up. I made a big mess out of it." And she got in there and she got a little one of these piece of paper, you know, where you like you fold it that way and you you cut around and then you open it up, you know, and it like makes a heart. You know, you all learned how to do that and. And she got it, cut it crooked and cut her finger and had blood on it and everything. And he said, where is it, honey? She said, it's in there. You don't want it. I messed it all up. And he said, let's go in there. She got it out from under the bed, and there it was. And it was cut crooked and blood on it and everything. He said, honey, I want that. She said, daddy, I'm, look at it. It's a mess. And he hugged her and said, that's exactly, exactly the valentine I want, honey. You know, you're here this morning, ain't no doubt in my mind, y'all. Ain't no doubt in my mind. There's people here this morning feel just like it. You say, I can't, God don't want nothing to do with me. I've messed up. Gosh, I'm a mess. I'm in a mess right now. I'm, I'm living awful. I'm living stupid. I'm doing the most, God don't want nothing to do with me. Oh, it'd be nice to be like all these good people. Listen, you're just the one in here the Lord wants this morning. You're the one. The Lord wants. He wants you to bring him your heart, bloody, broken, messed up, crying, and say, Lord, here it is. That's a willing heart. That's a willing heart. You got it? Let's stand and bow our heads and pray. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Nobody's moving. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. Can I ask you a question? Simple, simple question. Does the Lord have your heart? Does the Lord have your heart? Does the Lord have your heart? If he, if he don't, give it to him this morning. Amen, amen. Something's coming already. Something's coming already. If you need to come, you come. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved by the grace of God. This would be the perfect time for you to come and get saved. The Lord wants your heart. He wants your heart. Will you let him? Say here, preacher, this morning, please pray for me. I need prayer. Would you slip up your hand and let us pray for you this morning? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over the place this morning. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him our hearts this morning. Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done right now. Save that one which is lost. Touch that one that may be cold or walking afar off or a guilty distance. Have you way in our hearts this morning. Do what needs to be done. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we ask this. Amen. We're going to sing this morning on the first verse of this song. If you don't know that your heart's right, you come right now. Come on, right now. Just come on, come on, right now. Mama, daddy, boy, girl, teenager, let's go. Join these on the altar this morning. Just get out of seat. Come, right? Hey. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. Give him your heart. Give him your heart, y'all. Give him your heart. Thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God. Amen.
softly this morning get things right get things right he don't want your money he wants your heart he don't want your talent he wants your heart now he wants all that too but he wants your heart first your heart first give him your heart first amen amen all right all hearts clear thank you amen all right 